What's going on, you teasy? Man, listen, man. I let that last one sizzle in y'all spirit for a little bit, man. I'm back with another one. Look, if you watching and you ain't like, subscribe to something to the last video, man. As soon as you get done with this one, please go do something to that other one. You know what I'm talking about? But listen, um, today, I want to talk about the particulars of why I drive a $1,000 car as a grown-ass man. Um, because I feel there's something to be taught, something to be learned, something to be gained from just another perspective on ways, options, and outlets that you can live without stressing yourself with the haggle of the pressures that this today's society puts on us, right? So, uh, I'm in the inside. Get out real quick, man. Do a little walk around for y'all. I have a 2000 and... 2001, I want to say. I have a 2001 uh, Honda Odyssey. So the Honda minivan. And I would say today, if you wanted to replicate it, and you wanted to, and you wanted to get one, so not too bad, right? This living in the hood, man. Those, those are also, man. I'm gonna do a video on that too. The, just the, just the, the difficulty. Of, I want to show y'all the tread of the tire. You know what I'm saying? I, for the last two years, I've only gotten tires from the um so for the last two years i've only purchased tires from the mexican tire uh you know little shops that be on the side of the road so for the last two years i've never purchased like a brand new tire from firestone or nothing like that um but anyways like i was saying the i want to do a, a video on the just the pressures that get put when you get put in these you know what I'm saying? Subsidized housing communities or communities that are built specifically for black people that have a certain type of income or background. When you start living in those type of neighborhoods, right? You fall victim to societal pressure. So if they shooting outside and your shit gets shot up, then, or you get hit and you just hit and you wasn't even in it. And those are the societal pressures that politics played a role in deeming the outcome for your life. So, you know what I'm saying? It's all we'll get into that another time but anyways man so y'all seen the car right y'all you know talking about it's a minivan the kid stuff i got a, a a big family so it's the the enough space for the kids to move around and do what they supposed to do haul everybody do what it was supposed to do when i bought it um uh, what me and me and my lady bought it for it was like th right at 3900 right at 3900 um we had some problems with the transmission and stuff like that but but we could say right at 3900 one the car was blue booked at like 25 but it came with a warranty and all of the stuff you wanted to buy one now thousand dollar car all day long so the benefits i feel i've lived two lives right the life where we try to get like newer cars and had payments and stuff like that um it never really worked out either that long and shit we've been having buckets for the last shit, forever really <laughs> um we've been having buckets for like you know what I'm saying the last five years been like heavy heavy bucket years like you know what I'm saying going Craigslist look at something cheap purchase it real quick see how long it lasts for the engine blow up on y'all you know what i'm talking about so i probably say for the last two years so prior to that i worked at the car dealership and you know, i was working on putting my stuff together and getting my credit right and then right so then i could get a newer car and then pay the payments and have it like the, you know the american dream y'all know the stuff that most of most of y'all be doing right but then along the process, you know what I'm saying? Along the process, I want to say I got awakened to just the differences, right? You can go with the new car, right? So you got to, you got to build, first of all, you got to build your credit. And then 
a lot of building your credit and then building established credit. So a lot of places that when you apply for credit, they want to see that you've been at your job for a long time. But shit, what if I don't want a job? Now it's harder to prove that you have an established back history because you don't have a place of employment, right? Or like in my case, I was going through different places of employment. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was a job whore, right? So, you know what I'm saying? If I would get a job to pay 12 and I'm applying and I'm applying and somebody called me back with the 15, all right, 12, I got to go. I'm sorry. It's not you. It's me, baby. You know <laughs> Deuces. So when you do that, right, you're chasing the bigger paycheck, but it re it renews your consistency every time, right? So, so but you do that. You apply for the credit and then you get, now you got the phone bill, you know what I'm saying? You probably got a little credit card or some little gas card. You got your car. Um, man, I said in my head though, as I was being awakened through the process, what's the use in paying somewhere like two, so 250, 350, 450, depending on what kind of car you get. What's the use in paying that amount per month? If one is going to take out most of your weekly or biweekly earnings, right? And then you already got to divide the rest up for rent. And I got kids, so I got to put that on there too, right? And the only thing I'm going to be, the car is going to drive me to where I want to go. I'm going to park it and then look at it outside my job. And then I'm going to get back in it and then drive that motherfucker home. I probably drove the car for an hour and a half out of a 24 hour period, but I spent most of the day earning the ability to drive the car. You see what I mean? So a lot of situations don't necessarily call for that being a necessity. So I said, okay, boom, I'm gonna go ownership. So at least if I get halfway there and then the car goddamn blow up, I got my four, my five, $600 out of the car as far as value, right? But I don't have to keep worrying myself with those bills. So then when I go to work that next week, well, that's new money. So, but to do that, right, you have to overcome the societal pressures because there's definitely societal pressures that come with having a bucket because a lot of people you're going to associate with, a lot of people you go and be around, they got the new shit. They're willing to do that payment structure. So they like, man, this motherfucker got a bucket. But the, so, so the difficulty is building yourself, right? When you're building your spirit. And what I mean by that is working on yourself enough to say, I'm not in the position to spend most of my money on a car payment. So right now, what I'm going to do is not give a fuck what you're talking about, right? And work on the dilemma that comes within yourself saying feeling less than or less significant because you don't have a show pony the same way everybody else got a show pony. And all, that's just perspective, man. Cause a lot of people, there's a lot of people right now, man, that's living so fucked up, so stressed, so feeling so overwhelmed by what got dealt to them in the height of this Corona madness Got that? Sorry, y'all. I just seen a raccoon, man. What the hell? But anyways, feeling overwhelmed by the madness that Corona dealt that don't even think about you could unburden yourself from a lot of your problems by living beneath your means. If you live below your means, right? Meaning that if you can afford to do something, and you choose that you're going to wait and hold off on that thing. If you can do that for an extended period of time, you can build up a nest egg. And I'm telling you, a nest egg cures so much stress that comes with not fucking, oh man, my job, goddamn, they ain't letting me have enough hours and the, the bank took my money and the car people want this money. And I, man, you could unhibit yourself from so much of that stress by saying simply, 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 fuck them. Man, I don't need that shit. I don't need to go buy shit 
to impress motherfuckers that I don't don't know, don't like, or don't give a fuck because they ain't going to help my goddamn bills at the end of the day and build something. I said in my head, man, if I could take that extra $500 I'll be paying for a car and build something, then now I have an asset that's able to pay for the car. What if you're able to get a car, right? with a new car in your business name and then your business pays for the bills and you ain't got to fucking worry about them car payments. I said, man. <laughs> so then, look, ever since then, man, look, it's been that mentality. So I, now granted, that mentality, so th there's that mentality and, and, and all of the good stuff and then you invest in all of the stuff that you're supposed to do. Yes. The mentality, the other side, right? There's, a, there's another side to riding with a bucket there's a fear <laughs> there's a fear especially when it's, a, it's 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 definitely a sacrifice because when you have kids one of the things that you want to do is just get the hell where you're trying to go when you're trying to go there and know that you're going to be there when you get there now with a bucket i have been trying to go to where i'm trying to go to get there because when i'm trying to get there i want to be there and ain't got them got there ever Man, I'm talking about get dead batteries, flat tires, sh wiggles and shakes and do, 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 oh shit, this one's going out. This one's dying, Tony. But at the end of the day, I feel like the the stress of driving and and not getting to not having the most reliability um in terms of car is easily settled by I don't got to fucking go home flat, piss poor, broken, can't feed my kids. You know what I'm saying? So the car may not got them do it. I, there's no promises. I don't, I don't know what it's going to do every day. I put some gas in it and hope that it's going to get where it's going to get if I treat it nice. But man, that stress of not being able to feed your goddamn family, bro. That's a whole different, that, that's a whole different kind of stress. Right, I wouldn't wish that on nobody. No, you know what I'm saying? One of the bare necessities in the in the, in the world that we should be able to do, figure out, and put together as a community is not letting our black babies go without, right? And in all senses of the word, because some people they got a whole bunch of food stamps, but their kid are going without the literacy that needs to be put into our youth to further this generation so at the end of the day it's, it's it's a lot of small details and things like that but i find solace in knowing that i'm not overpaying for transportation allowing my family the ability to have low overhead costs as low as we could possibly get it because we go without fucking everything as low as we could possibly get it until we build a machine that's able to generate a higher income that's a, able to allow us to bring up our overhead a little bit, but not have to dip into our fucking pocket every goddamn time and then go trade our damn time for money, taking time away from our kids every time that we want more transportation or a fucking Gucci belt. So it's just the two different schools of thinking and ways of thinking. But I just wanted to upload this to show you that there are people living a certain type of way, giving you options. There are options, man. You don't got to live the way that they told you you had to live. You don't got to do the things that they told you you had to do. Oh, oh I think that's, I think that's the thumbnail. But without further ado, guys, talk to me, man. Tell me, like, subscribe. You know what I'm saying? Tell me something. Look, tell me, you better go. You got a good new car, man. You got to be flying. You know what I'm saying? We'll talk about it, man. And, we'll, and, and I'll give you my personal point of view. You give me your personal point of view, and we can convene and talk in the middle, man. But look, until then, I'm building. Please like, share, subscribe, do something, talk to me, man. I'll see y'all on the flip side.